July 1995. We're in Jackson, New Hampshire, and this is the start of a uh, another great hiking adventure. We're heading for uh, Greenleaf Hut on Mount Lafayette. It is right now. It is Saturday morning. We just spent the night at the lodge, Jackson Village. Very pretty place. There's 12 of us. Lane and I, my cousin Carl, my daughter Laura, and her husband Tim, Beth, and Paul, and um, Willie's folks, Lori and Jock, and their friend Bruce, and my other daughter, Heidi, and her husband Andrew. In a few minutes, we're going to head head down the road here and about uh, one hour over these mountains here uh, after a little breakfast we'll start up to Greenleaf. Okay, we're there. We're at the trailhead. You can see the sign, Greenleaf Hut, 2.9 miles. We're going up the old bridle path. Greenleaf Hut. Here we go. Blaney with her uh, whole staff. And there's a hiking team for you. Carl, the 500 miler from Rochester. Let's go. We're on a pit stop here, part way up the mountain. Carl and Blaine, a couple hikers we're talking to. We're getting up there. We've been hiking for a while. Uh, what we're looking at, looking over to the right here, we believe is Mount Lincoln. And the ridge line at the top of here, to the left, that goes up to uh, Lafayette. We're heading up to Lafayette. So we're getting up in the country that looks like that in a little while. It is. Incredible. Notice we started up this trail. The trail in about 10 minutes set from the bottom does uh, directly interface with a fast flowing stream so you can wait and get your water right there at the stream. Which is a good thing to know in the future. Well we're getting up there, have a little break. There's a lady with a, a staff, see her staff? Her Scottish walking stick. An Australian hat. Let's see if we can get her turned around. Hey cutie. There she is, wasn't that cute? Blaney, a hiker who claims she's a non-hiker. Yet here she is sitting on top of the mountain. Break out now. Look out here. Starting to see the see Lincoln and the big mountains and and uh, we're getting up there. Now we're really up in God's country now. I think right up there on that shoulder is the hut they were going for. And this then is the trail, I believe, to Lincoln. Leave this trail to, I mean, to uh, Lafayette here. Cross the top to Lincoln. Uh, knife Ridge over here to Haystack. Haystack, Lincoln, and Lafayette. And we will be spending the night right up there on that ridge. And we would say we're about an hour from there now. The top of it now. We're hiking, hiking in uh, open, open ridgeline country. Don't well, believe we're only halfway there. Got to be careful now. I got to rather street up to my right, so I got to be careful of what I'm doing here with this camera. Maybe our hut's uh, at the base of on that shoulder up there, at the base of that knob, and then that's the hike up to. Uh, to Lafayette. Right below me is a rather steep drop right down to the bottom of this ravine here. And then we look across this great wonderful gulf, this ravine pitching down here and, and this ridge line and oh this is wonderful country and we're about to hike up this ridge line right here. It is a wonderful day. Rock here, this little beautiful mountaintop butterfly. Let's see if we can get a look, look at him. Isn't he pretty? Hello, fella. Hi. There he goes. Oh, yeah. In the high country, and we have a little visitor. There he is, little red squirrel. Tame as he can be. Where is he? There he is, little fella. Hello, fella. Just coming up right next to Blaine. Blaine's sitting right here. Little fella's just coming right in. Grab a little something, running off. Red squirrel and chipmunk. Nice little lunch. Nice little mountain lunch. Just so Jock and Lori. And Bruce, they just came up behind us on the trail. We thought they were ahead of us, but no, they're 
we're behind us. And the rest of our team, I guess, is still down there behind us. We figure we're about maybe, maybe about uh, another 45 minutes to the camp. As happy as a clam, happy for the first time in hours, sitting there underneath a little pine tree, surrounded by our little friends, our little chipmunks and red squirrels and birds. Hear that little bird? Got her staff hanging up there. If I don't watch it in a few minutes, she's just going to fall right asleep on me. Happy as a clam. Rocky shoot here. Right in front of us was a was a lady with a baby, which looked really pretty absurd, pretty dangerous. But uh, fortunately, it's dry. But this is uh, very steep, very rocky, and up we go. <laughs> Well, we just made that scramble up, and uh, we're just looking across now. Not sure what we're looking at, but there is a cable car or a tram going up. Oh, look, it's moving. Yes, it's moving. The tram. My we guess the tram. is that we're looking at the backside of Mount Cranmore, probably. We just came up out of the woods, way down there, and then you come up onto this ridge line here. And now for the last hour or so we've walked this ridge. Once you're on this ridge, it is really just beautiful. Just beautiful. You see from the shoulder, there's a pond right over there on the back side of Cannon. Now I'll check the map. But I think that it looks like there's a shelter there. And uh, that's probably Lonesome Lake. I don't know. We'll have to check. Anyway, let's head back on this trail. Some more folks coming up it. We've got to continue on. We're near the top, we found a beautiful little sunny blade off to the left. Blaine found a little mossy bed there to lay down in. She's just recovered from it. There's a sign over there that says no camping. But we don't intend to camp. But it is a beautiful spot. It's about two o'clock. We about four, four and a half hours here. We've been taking it real easy, but we feel good and rested and we're Probably only about five or ten minutes away from the camp, which is up that rocky gully. Just one more, hopefully, rocky gully to go. We break out. Blaine, Chris, Carl, we break out onto the top. Green leaf hut. Looking out. Looking up on Mount Lafayette. Green leaf hut. On top of the world. How sweet it is. Backside, of course, is a trail. Goes down from the backside of the hut up to Mount Lafayette. And there is a there is a pond here, but unfortunately, unlike most ponds up in the mountains, this one is is growing over. That's a shame. I don't know whether there's going to be any fishing fishing down here or not. Maybe maybe along the edges. We'll have to check, but. I'm afraid this does not look like a fishable pond. That's too bad. Over Hello. Here. Hello. Bonjour. We're just shy of the summit. Carl, Uranus, and I come up here. We're in a beautiful spot. I think we're as far as we need to go today. As far as we're concerned, this is the summit. We just hiked from uh, from the um, hut. It's about uh, it's about a mile. Uh, hour, hour and a half hike. Up from uh, up from uh, get, uh, Greenleaf to um, to the top of Mount Lafayette. Up here, these the trail is marked by cairns, large piles of stone, because you really can't see the trail without those uh, piles. And we'll take a look at the other ridge line in a minute. Somehow it meets it. We follow that ridge all the way up here. I've ever had in the White Mountain. About an hour, which is pretty good. But we made it, and uh, it was the toughest hike that we've taken to a hut yet. So, Zealand, Carter, and Gale made this was the toughest. We'll go down and spend the night in that hut. We have uh, chicken dinner for that, I believe. Uh, look down the. Oh, it's gorgeous. Look down here. Pretty as a picture. Take a walk over here to the ledge. Give you a look at uh, what's going 
spot over here. Sure. Yeah, that's good. At least, at least make a cameo appearance in my own. Uh... Down from the top of Mount Lafayette, some of the premier hikers of the area, <laughs> Lori, Jock Lawrenson, and Bruce Horowitz, singing as they go. Wait till we catch them on, on, on film tonight with a ukulele, maybe a guitar. I think they're a little heady from the atmosphere. They probably have altitude sickness, I think, is probably the problem. Usually you don't see this wild erratic singing and dancing on the top. Al some people, altitude just affects them that way. Yeah, you know? So, anyway, they did it. They conquered the top. We're going to fudge it and say we conquered the top. Made it to the top. We're looking now. There's Carl, we're, we're on the top. Looking out on the Pemigewasset Wilderness is the trail signs, Franconia Ridge, down that way, Falling Waters, Liberty Spring, Liberty Spring, Tent Site. Help we're in the Alpine Zone. Now, take a look over here. We just came up, of course, uh, from Greenleaf Hut, which is a mile down. But out here, in this gorgeous Pemigewasset Wilderness area, if you were to head down this ridge, I believe, towards the end, then head down, cross that ridge, right over there is Garfield. Now, last year we were at Galehead. From Garfield, you can go over to Galehead Gale Head, I believe, is right yeah. over there. That hazy line against the back is where Gale Head Hut is, and that's where we were last year. So we're looking down on the Pemi Gwasset Wilderness. Oh, it is absolutely incredible. Spectacular. It's about 4 or 15 in the afternoon. Handful of people up here. There it is, a junco. Bird of the north, bird of the high country in the summer. This time of year, the only place you'll see a junco is in a place like on top of Where are you? Tough to see you. There he is. He's escaping from me. So long, Junko. There, up that bridge, you can see it. Up to the top of Mount Lincoln. And then eventually, pump it down. <laughs> Boom. Back into the valley. Absolutely incredible. On the skyline over here is the uh, other presidentials leading up to Mount Washington, right over there. Gorgeous. What a spot. This is the pond at uh, Greenleaf Hut. Now, it's full of uh, yellow water lilies. Uh, there's very little clear water. I'm told there's no fish in it, but I think we'll go down there and try it anyway. I'm also told that it's been like this forever, that this is not a recent thing, and that there's a book about Thoreau being here way, way back in the 1800s, and him commenting on the amount of yellow water lilies, so who knows? So we will go down and try it. Maybe a few dries along that shore, dry flies after dinner. See the hut. Kids all over the place cleaning things up. There they are. Got them. Got them. There she is, my daughter. <laughs> well, we're just kind of. Oh, there's Andrew checking his money. All right. Got a great kitchen here. A lot of good things going on. The place is bustling, noisy, all kinds of good stuff. Here's where we get our water from right there. Get down maybe tomorrow morning. Kind of milling outside our place here. Our lichen leader is here. She's going to talk to us about lichens. Get her in focus. There she is. 
We're going to have a little little educational thing on lichens. A little after dinner thing. After dinner. There's a group being taught about lichens. There's Blaney and my ancient L.L. Bean jacket. And then if we look around the area here, there's another group just sitting, talking about things, philosophy, life. Sitting as the sun goes down, relaxing, getting to know new people. Mountaintop in the load. First time in the hut. Flurry of activity. Whole world is here. Just not anything outside, but. Fog and mist and stuff. Here's the table. Hard at it. Cast of characters. Beth. Big Beth. Paul. Big man. Pancakes. Bruce. The man from Rhode Island. Big man. Blaney. Without her Australian hat. Carl. The man from Rochester. Big man. Oh, there he is, showing off again. He's got his camo pants on, ready to attack the, the mountain. <laughs> got her, little Heidi's hiding behind there. Laura, Laura doesn't like a picture taken in the morning. Oh, <laughs> Tim doesn't like his picture taken in the morning. I'll tell you, the mountain breakfast. First course, uh, oatmeal. Second course. Uh, Pancake. Heckler Burke. Got our mottos around here. Carry in, carry out. Number one motto. Second motto is no fires in the uh, in our beautiful wooden hut. And there's a third motto, which I just can't remember. We've got two bunk rooms. Room we slept in. It's quite nice. Nice center place where uh, actually you can sleep with your lady if you want. Double. Very clean. We're in the final preparation stage. I'd say so. You got him going, guy. You got him going. So. We're having a little explanation of her high tech leg. <laughs> Old field hockey. Bionic woman thing? Better than she was. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the lady with the crook. <laughs> I'm the crook. I've seen like five pack on the two or hidden. I like his yeah, it's like a Paul Revere hat. See if it would make a difference, you know? I think I like it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The hut. Adios hut. What are we waiting for, Dad? Adios Greenleaf. Very foggy. Heading up. This crew is going to Mount Lafayette. Mount Lafayette crew. Adios. <laughs> there they go. They're heading up and around. Big hike. They're five or six hours in the fog. We're going back down again right now. We came down a different trail. We came up the bridle path, which is really the best trail because it comes along a beautiful ridge. This trail just came down off the mountain. For the most part, it's just a dull, steep chute. But right here, I don't know where we are, but part way down Greenleaf Trail, Greenleaf Trail, is this incredible notch. We're in the notch. The fog is blowing up the notch in our face. The wind is here. It's a rock, it's a narrow path below a huge rock face. I'm looking straight up above me right now at a rock face. Incredibly beautiful. It's just a narrow, rocky notch coming down both sides with the weather just boiling up through here. It's just, see, see, see it coming through there? Look at that. 
Look at the boil through here. Beautiful spot on Greenleaf Trail. Highly recommended, even though the trail so far has been very dull. I know, I know. Um, really? up, oh, only when we're on all rock, because you can't see Kearns or Carnes or whatever. Cairns. You know, first one's worth it when we're we'll walking down here for days. We've got the tic tacs to keep us safe. Exactly. Oh, that's right. I've got the, it's, the weather is just boiling up through here. Uh, we're going to head down now. This is probably our last really scenic spot on this uh, trail. something called Poetry in Motion. And this one on the subway really reminded me of Chris and Blaine. Um, it's a, written by a contemporary of Chris named Ted Kuzer, who I don't know, but uh, it's called A Map of the World. And it says, one of the ancient maps of the world is heart-shaped, carefully drawn, and once washed with bright colors, Though the colors have faded, as you might expect feelings to fade from a fragile old heart, the brown map of a life. But feeling is indelible and longing infinite, a starburst compass pointing in all the directions two lovers might go, a fresh breeze swelling their sails, the future uncharted, still far from the edge where the sea and that's my memory of Chris um, leaving Blaine and waiting for him for her to come and join him. Raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise